Sarcoidosis is a multi-system inflammatory disease of unknown etiology that predominantly affects the lungs and intrathoracic lymph nodes. Sarcoidosis is manifested by the presence of non-cassiating granulomas in affected organ tissues. It is characterized by seemingly an exaggerated immune response against some kind of an unrecognized antigen. First, let's discuss about the etiology and pathophysiology. The exact cause of sarcoidosis is not known. However, both genetic and environmental factors seem to play a role. As yet, no bacterial, fungal, or viral antigen has been consistently isolated from sarcoidosis lesions. Sarcoidosis is neither a malignant nor an autoimmune disease. T cells play a central role in the development of the disease. There is accumulation of CD4 positive T cells, accompanied by the release of interleukin 2 at the sites of disease activity. In addition, increased production of Th1 cytokines such as interferon is also seen. Moreover, both tumor necrosis factor and tumor necrosis factor receptors are increased in this disease. Thus, anti-TNF agents such as pentoxifiline and infliximab are effective in the treatment of sarcoidosis. In addition to T cells, B cells also play a role in sarcoidosis. B cell accumulation has been shown in pulmonary lesions. And there is evidence of B cell hyperreactivity with immunoglobulin production, leading to hypergamma immunoglobulinemia or excess gamma immunoglobulin in blood. All these cell types come into play to fight against some kind of an unrecognized antigen. The ultimate result of this exaggerated immune response is formation of non-cassiating granulomas. I have done a separate lecture on granulomatous inflammation. If you are interested, you can watch that video as well. I have put a link in the description box. Now let's discuss about the clinical features. Signs and symptoms of sarcoidosis depend on the extent and the severity of the condition and the organ involved. Approximately 5% of people are asymptomatic and incidentally detected by chest radiography. Systemic symptoms present in about 45% of cases, including fever, anorexia, and arthralgias, or joint pain. Common pulmonary complaints include dyspnea on exertion, cough, chest pain, and rarely hemoptysis, or coughing up blood. Physical examination findings are extremely important in sarcoidosis. First let's see what are the pulmonary findings on examination. On auscultation, crackles may be found in some individuals. Chest radiography staging system gives a clear idea on the disease progression. This system consists of four stages. In stage 1, hilar lymphadenopathy occurs bilaterally. Enlarged lymph nodes in this stage are denoted by the yellow arrows in the first chest radiograph. In stage 2, there is bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy, as well as inflammatory infiltrates. Turbidity in the second chest radiograph indicates this inflammatory infiltrate. In stage 3, chest radiograph shows only the inflammatory infiltrate, no lymphadenopathy can be identified. In stage 4, there is fibrosis. About 30 to 60 percent of sarcoidosis patients develop ocular manifestations. Bilateral granulomatous uvitis is the most common presentation. In this image, you can see the intraocular granulomatous lesions seen in ocular sarcoidosis. Cardiac manifestations of sarcoidosis include arrhythmias and heart block, which can cause sudden death. Rarely, sarcoidosis may cause neurologic manifestations. These include lymphocytic meningitis, cranial nerve palsies, and hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction. Sarcoidosis also causes certain endocrine abnormalities, including diabetes insipidus, which is the commonest one, hyperprolactinemia, and hypogonadism. Now let's discuss about the diagnosis of sarcoidosis. Useful methods in diagnosing sarcoidosis include laboratory studies, imaging studies, and histologic findings. Laboratory studies are mainly based on the serum markers of sarcoidosis. These markers include serum amyloid A, soluble interleukin receptor, lysozyme, angiotensin converting enzyme, and glycoprotein KL6. Hypercalcemia or hypercalciuria is seen in some patients because non cassiating granulomas secrete 1,25 dihydroxyvitamin D. 
Saramangio tensin converting enzyme level is increased in about 60% of patients because non-caseating granulomas secrete ACE, which may function as a cytokine. Imaging studies are also important in diagnosing sarcoidosis, especially the pulmonary lesions. A chest X-ray may reveal pulmonary lesions as we have already discussed in the previous section. In addition, high-resolution CT scan may identify active alveolitis or fibrosis. Diagnosis requires biopsy in most cases of sarcoidosis. Major histologic finding is non cassiating granulomas with special stains negative for fungi and mycobacteria. Finally, let's discuss about the treatment of sarcoidosis. Most patients require only symptomatic therapy with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Approximately 10% of patients need treatment for extrapulmonary disease. And about 15% of patients will require treatment for persistent pulmonary disease, usually with corticosteroids, like prednisolone. Non-corticosteroid agents are used in steroid resistance disease or when the patient has intolerable adverse effects with steroids. Some of these agents include methotrexate, azathioprine, cyclophosphamide, and infliximab. Okay. That is all I wish to discuss in this video. Hope it made sense. If you have any question or doubt regarding this topic, feel free to post them in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you soon in the next video.